One in 47 million. Those are the odds of five babies coming all at once. 50 years ago today, it happened with the birth of the Lawson Quins. Samuel, Deborah, Lisa, Shirlene and Selina were a national sensation, capturing the hearts of New Zealanders. However, after the whirlwind of bottles and nappies, the Quins came up against tragedy and misfortune, including the death of their mother when they were just 16. Author Paul Little has just completed their biography and joins me now. Paul, good morning to you. Good morning. I mean, you're, uh, you're a very, very experienced biographer, but how do you go about putting the lives of five people into one biography? Yeah, that's especially complicated, mm. especially lives that were so big. Um, until they were 16, roughly their lives sort of went along together and same. But then after their stepfather shot their mother and, and himself, they went they, they had predictable dispersed. reactions, yeah, and they went to various countries. So the story takes place Australia, New Zealand, the United States, but they're still together at the same time. So you just you take it to there, and then I tell the stories separately or in groups because they tended to pair off, or be, there would be three in one place at one time. Right, and, right. Yeah, so the context um, was there. One of one of my producers, a younger producer, um, wrote a suggested question: How big a deal were the Lawson Quins? And you know, for young people, yeah. they might not imagine it. But if we go back, news was very different in those days. Society was very different, and these these children were the backdrop of many people's lives, weren't they? Mm. They were the biggest deal ever. You know, they were, there'd been nothing like this pretty much in the world. They were the world's third surviving set of quintuplets uh, and certainly not in New Zealand. So, yeah, we were fascinated. And when we lost touch after their mother died, you know, people continued to be fascinated. And they'd sort of come up every 10 years or so for anniversaries. But, yeah, now there are... And a lot of people don't remember... They remember the Quins being born in their childhood. And then they yeah. didn't something happen? Did their mother kill herself? No. You know, didn't this happen or that happen? So for people who remember them, there's so much that's, that's new in there. Uh, and for people who've never heard of them, it's an equally fascinating okay, story. So we, so we as a country followed their lives blow by blow for the first few years. Things, and, and they had an idyllic lifestyle, didn't they? They did. They had a beautiful life. And they had the best mother ever. One of my favourite things in the book is I was given some of her letters that she wrote to her own mother when she was in hospital waiting to, to have these, the quadruplets as they were expected to be. Mm. Uh, and they are just lovely. She was, if you wanted to design somebody to be mother, of quintuplets. It was an amazing woman, which has made the tragedy even sadder when it happened. Well, let's talk about the tragedy because this entirely changed their lives. In fact, it happened before the, tra the tragedy really was the separation of the parents and um, this this hideous stepfather as he became. Yeah, absolutely. And again, one of the things that makes the book relevant now is that this is still going on. You still have families which are being dominated by these men who know, you know, to track down women and say, if you don't come back to me, I'm going to shoot the kids. Yeah, and we still see it happening. So the Quins are 50 years old today. The rot started to set in when they were about eight. And so they were, would it be too much, too hard to say they were tortured to a degree from eight? They were severely abused in, in, in every way you can imagine, and but particularly emotionally. And, and that's that, what's and taken them so long to recover. And they have an equilibrium now, which you know, makes it, you know, you breathe a huge sigh of relief, which is one of the things everyone's done. They say, are they all right? You know, and, and they are all right. But, you know, it's been very hard to get all right. Is it miraculous that they are all right? Yeah, I think so. I, I used to I said to them often, you know, so many other people would have taken the experiences you've had and used them as the excuse for all sorts of mm. appalling mm. behaviour. But they've worked really hard. They have nice houses. They're well turned out. They have jo they work really hard. That's a lovely phrase. Kids. They're well turned yeah, out. <laughs> and that's quite, I mean, when you think about it, that's quite an achievement for five New Zealanders mm. to reach the age of 50 and they're all well turned mm. out with, with, with good solid lives. Yeah, exactly. Without without the complications. What is the biggest advice? surprise that you found? Because we would all have gone into this. As, as mm. soon as I heard that you were writing this, I have preconceptions about them. What was, you must have gone in with preconceptions. What was your biggest surprise? Uh, I think my my biggest surprise was that I thought I knew it all. I thought I'd heard all the stories, but once they sat down and started talking to me, and it was actually, it was the most stressful book, even worse than writing your book, was hearing these tales coming out day after day after day, and I was like, yeah. you know, it was really a, a big cloud. And so, of course, in many cases, you're getting four different versions of the same story. Yeah, fortunately, they lined up. Yeah, know, which is yeah. good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and relief. I say four because um, they didn't all entirely... Uh, buy into the well, book. Samuel lives in Australia and he, well actually they all came and went a little bit but, mm -hmm. but the four girls eventually were very much together as part of the book. Uh, Samuel lives in Cairns so he's about as far away as Fantastic. you can get. This is a real slice of New Zealand history. Um, where's it available? Uh, all bookshops, my website, Paul Little Books, uh, and yeah, that should cover Brilliant, it. Brilliant, Paul. I will enjoy that. Stolen Lives um, by Paul Little. And I will actually read it. He gave it to me and he said, well, you won't read this.